breath within the balloon. The breath within the balloon will not last. We never get inflated balloons on the Antiques Roadshow. Breath brings with it vulnerability. If never inflated, a balloon may last forever, but such limp reason will never enchant a child with decoration or gladden a heart with a stretching of possibility and the fulfillment of promise. Is not a universe of such balloons sadder than a universe where balloons are apt to burst? The breath within the balloon will not last, but the giving of breath and the tying of the knot at each new birth is an offering for our choice of worlds. I love that because your work is so much in poetry, so much about speaking and the breath and it's the breath of life and it works on so many levels so yeah, I, I tell you what it was i was at a party uh, and um, um one of my uh, nieces had blown up a balloon uh, and uh, and handed it to me and 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 it, it it just struck me then that her breath was in this balloon that it was not just a, a, a little bit of plastic it was more than that yeah. it's a beautiful way of thinking about it um so when and how did you first know you were a writer? I know you started off as performing, but when would you have seen yourself as a writer? <clears throat> well, um, I, I was brought up, uh, uh, born in St Anne's uh, in Nottingham, and then we moved over to Bilbra Council Estate when they knocked St Anne's down. And um, I was very gregarious as a child. And then uh, my mum died in a car accident when I was 11, and I became quite withdrawn. Uh, and uh, so I started reading uh, and I started um, thinking a little bit uh, more about life and, uh, and uh, all the questions and stepping back from being uh, the centre of attention. And um, I, uh, I read a lot of comedy uh, uh, back then and uh, I read a lot of uh, poetry, but the poetry actually um, I read by mistake to start off with. I, I got a book um by spike milligan which i thought was a comedy book uh because i've read all these comedy books and uh, there was a book called small dreams of a scorpion and uh, it was a book of serious poems and, and i read it and it made me cry and i thought how can somebody so funny touch me so deeply and uh and so i, I like that I, there's something glorious about that that you could have both extremes um, so I started reading uh, poetry books. And I, I would go to the uh, library in Bilbra and, and the library, Central Library, and try and get out all the comedy books and all the poetry books. And, and there is, there's something quite akin with both comedy and poetry in that what we're after is a, a greater truth. Uh, um, and we can reveal that with comedy. Uh, and people often laugh because we're revealing a truth. And certainly in poetry, I, I think one of the things is uh, certain lines itch you because you think, well, I knew that but i but i just i i just didn't understand it uh and uh so, so i thought there's something very akin to that so um i the the trouble was being uh from bilbra your image of a um a writer is not uh somebody uh in their own bedroom you know teenager in their own bedroom uh, in a council estate that's that's you know uh, not the idea of a writer um and i went to a writer's workshop uh, in Central Library, uh, Angel Row, and uh, there was about another 12 writers, all different uh, ages and, uh, you know, uh, men, women, uh, you know, sort of doing lots of different things, doing short stories, novels, uh, poems, um, you know, uh, plays even. Uh, I think uh, Barry Eath, uh, who wrote Me Mam Says the Play, uh, was there at that time. And, and I met other people who were working class and writers, and I, I, I felt that I was allowed to try and be a writer. And that's a very strange thing, but you've got to remember, I'm going back uh, to pre-punk days. So, so this idea of um, self-worth and this idea of uh, uh, having um, uh, the value of expression um, was, it was in the air, I suppose it's been in the air since, uh, since the 60s, uh, um, but certainly it hadn't, um, it, it hadn't sort of uh, um, formed um, in so suddenly as, it, as I think it did during punk. And um, so I, I got very motivated in that way. And I was very lucky that um, it was a, a woman called Wendy Whitfield who ran the group. And um, 
and she was very much a community arts person and uh, very much involved with East Midlands Arts. And they published my first book. I've, I've got it here. I've kept it all these years. I say book, it's a pamphlet. It's a pamphlet. Look at that's quite a book. I think there's 19 poems in it. It's called Is Love Science Fiction? And I took a few copies of this to Mushroom Bookshop. I, I, and, and so when my little pamphlet was put on the shelf in Mushroom Bookshop, which is a forerunner of uh, Five Leaves, yeah. um, I then felt like a writer. It's a great story and it does explain why uh, one of the things I was thinking about is how generous you've been in your time in doing sessions for Nottingham and Nottinghamshire libraries um, and you know you're very interested in grassroots work. That, uh, oh, I, 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 all, all, all my life has been community arts even when I was in television uh, it was all about building a community and you'll probably notice if uh, you look at any of the television programs I've made, um, people appear in other people's programs and there is a, a sense of a, a greater community. So yeah. the, the first program we made, um, the, a very small part uh, was played by Ruth Jones in uh, uh, Julia Davis's um, uh, Human Remains. And then of course she went on to have her own it with Gavin and Stacey. And it's been lovely to see people start off uh, you know, as, as the sort of the, uh, the junior uh, um, uh, and the, the, the periphery and then bring them to the centre. And I set up the Manchester Poetry Festival uh, 25 years ago um, and uh, a 19 year old Lem Sisse uh, was one of the support acts uh, on, on the first, because uh, I used to tour a lot with, uh, with Lem. Um, and, uh, you know, and now he's got his own Imagine programme and he's a world poet. Uh, and it's lovely to see this growth and, and perhaps to think that, you know, you, you helped in a very small way just to sort of keep the wheels going. And uh, so I love that. I think we're all part of uh, that um, infrastructure. Yes. And it's nice to see an alternative to the very Oxbridge comedy <laughs> network that everybody talks well, about. Well, funny that's enough, very I'm, interesting, I'm, the I'm, Manchester I'm, network. Yeah, well, I've, I've met a, a lot of the Oxbridge uh, people and, uh, you know, they're all decent people, but, uh, you know, they're very much, um, you know, sort of, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, a victim of their circumstance as much as anybody else is a victim of uh, uh, circumstance. Um, and uh, I think nowadays there's a lot more uh, mobility. I mean, uh, um, uh, Frank Skinner and David Baddiel have got a very good uh, on-screen friendship. Now, obviously, David Baddiel is Oxbridge and Frank Skinner is as uh, common as muck. Uh, um, you know, uh, I, I think he'd probably even thrown out of school. So uh, I, I, th I think the, the social bounds are very flexible now, um, all so much more flexible than they were. And I think that's down, I'm glad to say, I'm, I'm very proud to say that it's part of the generation that I grew up in. So if you, if you, get, if you think back to when I was 19, there was a lot of sexist, racist, homophobic, uh, um, humour about uh, um, and uh, an attitude and um, so I was part of the generation that said no we're not doing that. Now I'm from Irish descent so the idea of uh, people doing uh, uh, jokes about the Irish being thick didn't ring true to me uh, and obviously you know doesn't bear out uh, the facts and um, and so I, I think the, the, the generation of the 80s uh, um, uh, moving through to, to the 90s, there, there was very much a, 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 a movement of um, we're going to clear away all those uh, prejudices. Now, obviously, we've, we've, we've not. Uh, there's still a lot of work to do. I, I think there's still a lot of uh, ageism uh, about uh, and, and in humour and, and other places uh, um, and uh, sizeist, uh, regionalist, you know, uh, people from uh, Liverpool and Birmingham get ribbed for their accent and things like that. So I think there's still a lot of work to do, but I think we, we made a, a good move on that uh, path. Is there something interesting going on about Manchester? Because so many of the people you worked with, like yeah. Caroline Hearn, Craig Cash, Steve Coogan, came from that. Was it just happenstance? You all happened to meet there? or? Well, yes, we, we did all have to meet there. But um, I think there is a, um, a, a, an Irish uh, sense of humour, I'm sure. And I think there's a Jewish sense of humour. Uh, and and I, I think both of them are a little bit self-deprecating. 
I think that's part of the the, the mix of it. Uh, and I was always a big fan of Dave Allen. And uh, um, if you think about it, Dave Allen was uh, non-sexist, non-racist, non-homophobic, way back, way back before anybody had mentioned it. So I, I think there's uh, there's definitely styles of uh, communication and styles of uh, humour. Um, and uh, I think we were drawn to each other uh, in in that way. The, the way. We were on a similar journey and, and on a similar path. And uh, thank goodness I moved to Manchester. Yeah, yeah, it did seem like a good career move. Um, I, I'd like to talk about the impact that COVID had on you because you were mid-tour really with the escape plan and then lots of things I see that have been either postponed or cancelled and now you've got a new book. That's I, I have, I, now I've, I've, I've got all my books, strangely enough, here. So these are the ones prior to writing Mrs Merton. Uh, so as you can see, I, I, I did about a thousand gigs and I, I brought out lots of books. Um, and then since uh, I got back, uh, since I retired from television, I, I've written those. But I've never had an hardback book. And so there, have a listen to that. Uh, um, I brought a out this hardback book. book two weeks before um, the lockdown. And I thought, oh, lovely. I've got this lovely hardback book and, it, and it's beautiful. Uh, and um, and of course, I've not been able to get out and about and uh, and uh, you know, read from it and, and show people um, about it. Um, so it was a, a little bit disappointing, but um, in some ways, um, we're, it's a strange thing to say, but we're living through a moment of history that's unparalleled that we've got to take notice of and we've got to reflect in some way. Otherwise, when people look back on it, they'll only have the government's version of it, which um, not 100% uh, uh, accurate. Um, and, and I think that we need different perspectives on it. And, uh, and so I, I think it was it's every creator, uh, creative's duty to take, your, take it all in, to, to, to watch what's going on, to understand what's going on, to, to, uh, uh, to try and uh, find the bits that other people aren't looking at. Um, and then sift it through your own um, life and then try to reflect it in your writing. So uh, certainly when uh, COVID started, uh, I, I, I was aware of this and I, I thought I'll try and um, I'll try and see what it, what it meant to me and what it means to my family. So I, I've got an autistic son who's uh, uh, 22. Um, so we have to be very careful with him because he is not as uh, uh, conscious uh, of um, threat as, as you and I may be. Um, and, and my wife uh, uh, is writing as well at this time. So um, we formed our little unit and we've not been out for four months. Um, and um, so we've been homeschooling for the past uh, uh, four months uh, and we have a routine. So I, I have the mornings to write and Angela has the afternoons to write. So I look after Johnny in the afternoon and we do a, a schooling thing. Now, uh, it's quite, <coughs> it's very fun uh, the way we do it because uh, uh, we start off with a quiz. Now, a quiz is just a way of talking about something without it looking like you're talking about something. Uh, it's a very clever device. So, so we start off with a quiz. So yeah, we could talk about anything. You know, you do a question and then once, once we've got the question out there, then everything to do with that becomes relevant. Whereas it, I wouldn't say to you, uh, you know, uh, uh, let's talk about uh, animals in South America. Uh, but if I put what animals in South America, and that's part of a quiz, then we can talk about it. So it's a very, very clever device. So, so we start off with a quiz and then we do some home chores uh, and then we have a treasure hunt, which is a way of me getting Johnny to read. So, so uh, um, by reading, he knows he's going to get a, a um, you know, a sort of a treat at the end of it. Uh, he's motivated to read, so we 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 do that, um, and then uh, we go for a walk, so we get some exercise, uh, um, and then we we get involved in sort of uh, jigsaws and and sort of fun activities like that, little games and whatever. Um, so every day is the same, whether or not it's uh, a Sunday or a Wednesday, uh, a Saturday or a Tuesday, it, it's also. Um, and uh, to be honest with you, I think Johnny prefers it. <laughs> <laughs> to uh, you know, to to uh, um, the distractions that you get, because if you think about it, and we've all got this, we've all had to live 
without those distractions that, that fill up our days um, and uh, in, a, in a way take us away from essential thought and essential sort of being. So, uh, you know, all the gift shops and all this, I know you can go on eBay and, and uh, you know, if you put your mind to it, but all those little peripheries uh, have, have, have gone uh, and really we're down to uh, what is essential in life. And that's quite freeing in a way. And uh, I think it's quite freeing for Johnny and I think it's quite freeing for, for me. Uh, and then you start asking the questions, so what are the essentials? And, uh, and I, I find that, uh, certainly for poetry, I find that uh, uh, very interesting. So I, I've been writing a, um, uh, a new radio show. So I've, I've written six BBC Radio 4 shows. And um, the new one is a, is a normal communication. So uh, I've been looking into why we communicate. Uh, and why we started communicating and all the theories uh, about that and, and, and how communication has changed uh, um, and how we change like this with this new form of communication, um, uh, you know, with uh, Zoom and, and whatever. Um, so that's been great for me because I'm still uh, curious uh, and I'm, uh, I'm, I've got an all new uh, world to, uh, to be curious about. One of oh, the yeah. questions I was thinking, one of the questions I was thinking about is like, what inspires you? Because ah. quite often, you're inspired by your family in lots of your poetry. Oh, very, you're... very much so. Uh, um, you see, my my son has a different way of thinking about things. Um, so that's brilliant because um, the worst thing you want is somebody who thinks about things exactly as you do. You know, uh, and and so. Uh, uh, I, I love the fact that he, um, uh, he, he has a great honesty. Uh, if, he, if he wants to do something, it's a definite yes. If he doesn't want to do something, it's, it's a definite no. Um, he has great courage uh, um, in being himself and, and uh, doing the things he wants to do. And uh, he paints, uh, there's some of his paintings behind me there. Um, and, uh, you know, other painters have told me that, that the, 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 the courage with which he handles the paint and he doesn't have the 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 uh, history of uh, uh, painting on his shoulders he paints because he loves to paint and I, I you see even little lessons like that that for, for me to create poems because I love to create poems is the best reason you don't need any more reason than that uh, so in the, in the garage we've got uh, over 200 of his paintings uh, because he'll paint it he'll be painting today he'll be painting now in fact and I love that. So uh, I'm very much inspired by Johnny, by uh, uh, Angela, uh, who um, uh, you know I've, I've been married to uh, um, now for over twenty odd years, and uh, you know she's very much a, a practical person. Who you know once you get into lockdown, she's automatically looking at how to do it well. Uh, uh, and how to be practical about it, and how to uh, uh, and so she's geared up. Uh, um, and so we're, we're all geared up in the house. Uh, we now get, uh, I started off, I used to go to uh, the, the co-op in Asda, but now we've got deliveries coming in uh, and, and it's like a military operation when, when it comes in, you know, uh, um, I, and I, I, I'm sort of, I think you can be inspired by people, not necessarily just writing. I mean, I, I, I do uh, read other people and, uh, you know, there's people like Lem Sisse uh, um, uh, that, that, I, that I still read. Um, and uh, you know Ian McMillan, uh, I'm a big fan of. Um, but you can be inspired by people in all sorts of ways. They don't. It doesn't have to be a literary thing. But you can be inspired by people to write that will probably never write. You know, uh, by footballers and uh, mountaineers and, and whatever. Um, you mentioned Lim Sissy and Ian McMillan. Like you, um, they're they're performers of their work. <laughs> They do these wonderful live readings. Yes. And I like the description you use of yourself that you're a communicator because in all the work you've done in producing, in writing, in speaking, you know, the communication is, is the key thing. Um, I was wondering if you miss that kind of, do you miss that live performance? Because I know you've done, um, for Flapjack Press, you've done a Zoom reading. Yes. But you can't hear the audience. How odd <laughs> is that? 
you for can't, someone like you, you can't, what, what is that? And, and uh, uh, people will tell you that before uh, one of my performances, I'll shake hands with everybody in the audience. Yes. And I'll greet yeah. them and say hello and where you're from and mm. this sort of thing. Yeah. And, um, and so I do love communicating with people. And I look, you see, the, the idea of coming on like a rock star and there being dry ice and lasers and everything, and me going up there and going, oh, I'm going to read your poem. That's that never been me. To me, it, uh, it's like that we are doing today. It, 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 it's always a one to one communication. And even when you're on stage, you know, I'm hoping that each person in the audience feels that it's a one to one communication. Um, because when I'm in the audience, I, I want I want it. That, that's what I want to, to be. I, I don't I don't want somebody to do a show where I'm just a bystander and, and they've got some agenda and I'm just watching it like I'm watching a car crash. Uh, I, I, I like it to be uh, um, that somebody wants to tell me something and, and, and I'm interested to know what they want to tell me. So, so that, that's the way I, I operate. So I am, uh, I, I've been doing, as you say, some Zooms and, um, and I've been writing. Uh, um, so I am still communicating, but I don't get that feedback um, that, that would be great and of course feedback helps you when you're when you're um looking at something from somebody else's perspective that gives you a great view of your work so um like when i've read that poem at the beginning as i'm reading that part of it is i'm thinking what you are thinking of the the, the reading and so that gives me your perspective on the reading or my guess of your perspective on the reading as opposed to my perspective on the reading and I think that's very useful. So, so a lot of the book uh, poems in the books are uh, sort of owned to um, a, a greater degree because I've taken into account um, whether or not I'm communicating properly with people and, and what they're picking up, especially in humour, because humour is um, has a rhythm to it. Uh, and if you get the rhythm wrong, then people don't laugh. And you get the rhythm right, uh, and you know, obviously, the, what the words are within the uh, the image that you're you're portraying, um, it works uh, beautifully. Um, uh, but uh, that you can uh, imagine that in your head. But when you actually say it out loud, and it's in your own voice, and somebody else then laughs at the end of it, you can say, "That's worked." I don't have to read. I don't have to work on that anymore. Uh, you've got the pacing because there's a storytelling quality to your performances. That's uh, yeah, a... yeah, I like to, and, and I like to do the thing, as I say, for, that I, I found Spike Millie was doing was uh, um, I, I like to go from uh, funny to uh, moving to funny um, because I think that's how we live. I don't think we we live uh, where everything's one thing or everything's another. So I, you know, hopefully within the books. Uh, uh, you can start at the beginning and get to the end uh, and you'll have gone through lots and lots of different um, emotions and thoughts and, and uh, you know, it's, um, it reflects human life uh, uh, as it is in a, in a bit more uh, sophistication than thinking that we, we have one mode. I, I think in any one day, you know, um, we have a lifetime. I, I, I was thinking yesterday, it was a long day yesterday with um, Johnny and Angelo, where I took them swimming uh, in, in the morning. Um, and then, uh, you know, in the, in the afternoon, we did uh, some work. And uh, and then by the time it gets to nighttime, you think, oh my God, we, we have done, we, we have had so much going on, but also your, your head's got, you know, these 24 hours, even, even if you're stuck at home, you're still 24 hours. You're still thinking and feeling for 24 hours. So it's full of stuff. It's been quite interesting, actually, not to have things like football so that you can't numb yourself, as it were. Because when you watch football, you can, you, it's like a soap opera. You, 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 can, you can not think about anything else, although you can use it uh, uh, like you'd use a soap opera to, uh, um, as morality tales. Uh, but uh, to, to actually have a time where you're more with yourself and somehow it makes you the days longer and fuller. Looking back over such a productive career, what do you think you're most proud of? Mm. Well, I'm proud of all my books. Um, and, uh, and as you mentioned, I, I wrote a book um, with Angela 
uh, um, about Johnny, uh, called A Normal Family. I'm very proud of that. Um, the fact that I, I, I did uh, The Royal Family and uh, Mrs. Merton and Steve's early stuff um, is very good. Um, but I've got to say, it'd probably be The, the Normal Family and The Escape Plan because I put it, this is 40 years of work in this. Uh, um, and uh, you would hope in 40 years I got something right. <laughs> I, I thought that was the supreme irony of the escape plan, like looking back over your career and picking out the poems that mattered the best ones, you know, that have been chose from all your books well, as, of it, all the times for lockdown to come. Yes. Yeah. Well, strangely enough, yeah, I, mean, I work on the basis that I, I'm going to die at any moment. So if I die at any moment, this is the best I can do. I might do, I might do better in the future, but I've got to live. To the, now I'll tell you where the escape plans comes from so so I have this because my mum died at, uh, when I was 11 I've lived with the idea uh, of a, an early death uh, since then so uh, now my dad uh, uh, um, died uh, um, about seven years ago now uh, and my brother died and my brother was uh, two years younger than I am now so for the past two years I've thought I'm they both died of, uh, of uh, cancer and I thought I'm probably going to die of cancer at any minute so what I've got to do is to do the thing I can do as well as I can. Uh, and, and that, that will be as much as I can do. Uh, um, and um, so the escape plan comes from uh, the last words my brother said. So he was on, he was in a, um, an hospice. Um, we were all round. Uh, um, so I've got three younger sisters, um, sorry, two younger sisters and an elder sister. And there was myself and, uh, and Dave's um, uh, uh, widow issues now, uh, Jan. Uh, so we're all uh, there. And, uh, and Dave was in a lot of pain. And because he's the oldest, he, um, he was trying to make it easier for us. And there he is in, in pain, trying to make it easier for us. And uh, uh, he got his eyes closed and um, my youngest sister, um, Angela, um, said to him, what are you thinking, Dave? And uh, he whispered, I'm hatching a plan. And I love that. I love that he'd got this idea that he was somehow going to hatch a plan and escape. Uh, um, and uh, I, I think there's something beautiful about that, that even at that point when he was in pain, he was trying to make it easier for us and uh, he'd got a bit of humour uh, still there. Uh, you know, he's still got his personality. Um, so I, 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 I under I, control. <laughs> yes, yeah. So, so I, I, I called the book that, The Escape Plan. Yeah. Um, well, given that your father was 90, was he? He was, he was uh, a week over 90. I think what he'd done is, is he'd said, I'm going to get to 90, uh, and then, then that's me, me sorted. So uh, he got to his 90th birthday, and then, and then he died uh, within the week, yeah. Genetics, I think you've got, you're the same age as me, so you've got a while to go, yes. <laughs> let's, hope, let's hope so. I, 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 want, I, I want to keep living, and uh, 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 for, me, for me son and my wife as much as anything, uh, mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, uh, you, you don't want to be too selfish, but the, that that um, uh, it would be it would be good. And and because of this COVID business, um, you have to think like that, don't you? That you have to think about um, not uh, passing a disease, uh, um, you know, a virus on to other people. Uh, um, and and that's a great responsibility to think that you could walk into a room and kill somebody else. Um, and and it, it's sort of um, uh, you know, I do a lot of joking, but I find that responsibility uh, is quite sacred. The, the, you know, uh, I, I have um, my um, wife, uh, Angela's mum, uh, had a uh, heart attack and a stroke on the same day. Uh, and she's been living with that um, for four years and she's, she's uh, um, doing well. Uh, um, but I know that if she got COVID, she would uh, she would die, uh, and, and her husband uh, is on statins, and he's uh, uh, you know in, in his late seventies, uh, so he'd probably die. So I know that we have a responsibility to make sure they're okay, but a responsibility to make sure they don't die, and they don't die because you've and and uh, people all around the country 
I've got that responsibility. And it's quite an interesting thing for us to carry that you wouldn't have thought of before COVID. Yeah. And the responsibility of Johnny, I know you've said before, he loves people and he has no fear of people. That's a, yeah. you know, you can't explain to people. You need to stay away. No, no, but we, we've, done, we've done a good job on that. And of course, the thing is, if, if Angela and I uh, did die, then uh, he, he would have to, I don't know what would happen to him. Uh, uh, you know, he'd become a ward of, well, he's a ward of court. He'd, he'd be taken over by social services or something. Um, so... I say those responsibilities do sort of stay with you. Um, but that said, you've got to live life and you've got to enjoy life. Uh, otherwise, because if we were like this for the rest of us lives, we'd have to find a way of still getting the best out of life. So it's quite an interesting um, challenge. And it's sort of, in a way, it's, um, you know, it's sort of a metaphor for what life is anyway, in that, that we all live, with, people have got so many uh, uh, problems. We all live with these problems, but we've still got to find a way of getting joy. Uh, um, so uh, for, a, for a poet, uh, um, it's quite an interesting time uh, and to, to look upon that so as you said i did bring out this well it's not out yet but I, i've been writing this new book called the beauty within shadow and and the whole point of uh, uh, that the beauty within shadow is is this is to find the joy where where um we're not at the best of times yes i did wonder if that's what the title came from thus you know finding the, it's the silver lining, if you like, it's such a cliche. But yeah. uh, the beauty within shadows is a much nicer way well, of saying it. I'll tell you where the, 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 the metaphor came from for me. Um, I was talking to a, another poet, um, Pete Ramskill, who lives in Nottingham, is a great poet, and, uh, and he's an artist and a sculptor. And uh, he was telling me that he went into a very um, dark cave. And it was so dark that uh, the guide made them sit for half an hour in the dark. Uh, um, and um, and he sat for half an hour, and then their eyes adjusted, and then they could start seeing things that they couldn't see before because their eyes had adjusted to this pitch darkness. And I love the, the idea that 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 it's um, that we have this ability within us to see things we didn't see before, but we have to take a little bit of time and adjust. Yes. And it is interesting to see how people are moving online and moving to mail order with bookshops. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, I, I know you were due to come to Nottingham for the Poetry Festival. Well, yes, I, 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 I'd got, uh, um, I was going to do, and I, I, I hope I can do this in the future. I was going to do all 60 of the uh, Nottinghamshire libraries, and it would never been done before. And there's a lot of the libraries uh, I've never even had a poet before or, or any form of uh, entertainment. But I was going to do all 60 of them. Uh, um, and I was going to take a, a, a Nottingham poet, uh, you know, I think about eight of them, uh, uh, one to each library and get people from the library to read a poem. Um, and it's a, it's a format that I've done over the past couple of years. So I, I think I did about 12 Nottinghamshire libraries the previous year. And then the previous year to that, I, I did about 12 uh, um uh, uh, Nottingham City Libraries as opposed to Nottinghamshire Libraries. Um, so it's, it, it's an idea um, I've been playing around with, but this would be the biggest, uh, um, uh, you know, sort of uh, tour. And I was doing it all free uh, um, and uh, as a way of giving back, because as I say, um, with, without, without this one, I don't get to this one. Uh, so, so, you know, uh, I, I think um, I, I find that uh, I'm inspired to, to want to say to people, um, you know, uh, I mean, I, I've had such a brilliant career uh, in writing because um, I, I've been allowed to have a, an adventure that I didn't think I was allowed to have. So, so I, I've, I've done things like I've, I've met Sigourney Weaver and, uh, you know, I, I once actually, um, in Berlin, I lit uh, a cigarette uh, for, Bert, for Sigourney Weaver from one of those matchbox, you know, the matchbox things. And, and it was like being in the movies. Do you know, and, and I'm from a council estate, right? And, and there I was in Berlin, all dressed up in, you know, tuxedo and everything, using one of these matchboxes. I've never used, you know, um, matchbooks, I think they call them, uh, and, and lighting a cigarette for Sigourney Weaver. I stood next to Gorbachev 
No, he, he, you know, the, the leader of the, the free will. And he was laughing at jokes that I'd written. This was on the Clive Anderson show. Um, and, and I remember as a, as a kid, um, uh, Phil Jones in, in our class uh, school, uh, this was at William Sharp, um, saying that uh, he wasn't doing his own work because um, uh, we were on, uh, you know, a nuclear alert and uh, he didn't want his last day at, uh, uh, to be just doing his own work. <laughs> I was stood next to Gorbachev thinking about that. Um, so I've, I've had a brilliant adventure from this. So, so I want other people to have great adventures. And, and, uh, and so doing things like the, the library and... Uh, uh, you know, getting getting involved in in uh, helping uh, other people um, sort of get along in their careers, as, as with uh, a lot of the stuff we did on television. Um, it's great fun. Lemsi says, as if he was world leader, he'd have you as one of his top advisors. Oh, did, did, did you know? say that? Yeah, I'll find the interview and send you the link. I can't remember where I found it, but I will find it for you. No, uh, that is the greatest compliment. That is that is lovely. Yeah, do you know I hope he makes it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You'd both be very good at that. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I, I I love him to death. Uh, I, I see. I I knew him from when he was nineteen, uh, and uh, and and uh, it was very easy to to like. Uh, even though he was he, he was he got uh, a lot of angst in in those days. But uh, when you were with him. Um, uh, and I, obviously I've read his, uh, his, his book. Um, he never went into all the problems that he'd had. He, he just enjoyed the moment and enjoyed the moment with you. And, and I'm, I must have done, uh, I don't know, uh, 30 or 40 gigs with him. Uh, um, and we would go to a town, I would always drive because I'm a little bit older than him. So uh, I, I would drive and um, very often we'd be two or three uh, acts. And we go, and we go somewhere like Kings Lynn or, or uh, Aberdeen, and he'd be the only black person in the uh, in the in the uh, theatre. But he'd be the only black person we ever saw, all the way in there and all the way out. And I used to think his courage to 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 come into these places, to get up on stage, to uh, um, express his uh, uh, creativity, um, was and his motivation to that. I just thought it was. <sighs> so much bigger than uh, um, the, you know, some of the worlds that I'd been brought up to expect. He, he, to me, he made, and still does, uh, makes uh, the world uh, such that everybody in the world can connect on a human level. And I, I love that about him. I know he's got a, um, a, a, a TV program about him. I hope everybody will, will watch it. He, he is... Um, extraordinary person and yet he's he's every man and he does extraordinary live shows too i love the way you started with the what comedy and poetry have in common is that you can deal with the difficult stuff in them i mean he too can be very funny but you know there's a lot of of dark stuff in there well, well they do they do say don't they that uh, if you don't laugh you'll cry uh, and uh, obviously we're at times uh, when we've been up against it like in the in the blitz and things is, is where comedy comes out and i think uh, um I, I, I very often what you're doing in comedy is is your um you're looking for patterns and you're exposing those uh, patterns uh, in a way that makes us understand the patterns. So uh, you've probably heard of the rule of three in comedy where you say two things and then the third thing you expect to be in line with it, but you say something different. What that does is it makes you realise what you were expecting and whether or not that's a good or a bad thing. And um, you've got some great stories about Johnny where he comes out with the most unexpected things. He does, he does. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that story about the Our Father. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> where Angela saying, the Our Father, thy kingdom. And he says, for a horse. <laughs> for a horse, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I love the fact that, that there's Shakespeare in there. Yes. Which is, which is yeah. important, really, you know, because yeah, you don't know, like with any of us, you don't know what's going in and what's not going in. Uh, and, and, to, and to the extent that it's going in. Um, can you read us one of your new poems, Henry? I can, yes, I can. Well, I'll read you the, uh, the poem, uh, um, The Beauty Within Shadow. Okay. 
The beauty within shadow. There is often light in the darkness once your eyes adjust. And when your sight fails, it is said other senses heighten. Even with your lids tight, the mind can shine like the midday sun. And in the blackest void, who knows what awaits? Maybe another sense rises to help us become like ourselves or returns us to a time when all was in balance, awaiting ignition. Thank you.